My name is Mark Warren and I'm going to show you how to build a thermal detonator. Here is the 3D printed parts of the Ublet thermal detonator. Um, I'm just going to quickly talk you through uh, the difference that I've made um, in the redesigning of this in order for the electronics uh, to be put in place. Uh, the handle is identical to the original design. Um, the top dome is virtually identical. I haven't really made a great deal of changes on this other than take out the three tabs uh, that were in there that connected the uh, bottom and the top dome together. These are not needed anymore because of the internal section. The main redesign has been on the bottom dome. As you can see, the internal ring has been taken out. Um, you'll see the reason why this has uh, been done um, in just a moment, um, but this now uh, will have nothing in there, it'll just clip on the bottom uh, once the, uh, the thermal detonator has been uh, completed. So let's have a look at the, uh, the new design of the internal parts. So these are the printed internal parts. Um, as you can see, I've made the separate ring. Um, Anybody who wishes to not put the electronics in there, actually it's, it's, it's quite uh, good because it makes it a lot easier to, uh, to paint because obviously the ring is a different colour from the top of the dome. Um, so you might use that if, if, that, if you don't want to put any electronics in. The main underside of the electronics, the housing, um, as you can see here, where you've got the battery uh, goes into here. You can see the slot at the top there, that is where the um, switch will go, or the kill switch, which will turn uh, the unit completely off, stopping any drain of the battery, which is again accessed from the underside. Now on the side there's a slot there which will um, enable you to put a USB cable into the battery to charge it up, because obviously once the battery is in situ, there is no way you're going to get this out. So how this all works is this inner ring and the internal part will clip into this and you'll see some little slots on the side and it clips and locks into place like that. As you can see, you've got plenty of space to get the, the lights in there. Now this has just come off the 3D printer. I'll be um, making the holes um, slightly better, I tend to put a 5mm um, drill piece into them just to, uh, just to smooth them out and make them the right size. Um, they never come off the printer exactly right, they just need cleaning up a little bit, but a 5mm drill bit will, uh, will easily do this. Now once you've got the battery in situ there, you've then got the Arduino housing which holds the Arduino board on the top. Um, and once that's in place, you then have the speaker holder, um, which will then clip or snap into place. Clips in just like that, and it holds all together. So you've got everything all in situ just there. And as you can see, there is another little hole just here. Uh, the speaker that I uh, was using in the original thermal detonator that I built, um, was not very powerful. Unfortunately, the Arduino Pro Mini doesn't have any way of increasing the volume on this. I did get a beefier um, speaker, um, but this really didn't do an awful lot at all. So um, I've made an amplifier which will go into this hole and I've made it out of an N transistor, which I'll give uh, you a full rundown on how to make. Um, well, in fact, all the electronics will be done in the, uh, the next uh, section. So, um, so that's the internal parts that, uh, that have been redesigned. And obviously once this is, let's clip that in place, once that's in place, uh, the dome will then, you know, the right way around, will then snap 
and it's a tight fit will clip into place so everything is all held in and obviously then the bottom section will go on the bottom like that so that comes off you click the switch pull the lever back and we're uh, we're ready to go so that's the rundown of all the 3d printed parts um, so the next section will be to um, starting to build this Right, before we start uh, making the uh, or finishing the ring off, uh, ready for the electronics to be put on, uh, these are the three types of sandpaper that I, uh, I use, which is from coarse, medium, and fine. Um, a lot of the coarse paper work is done on the dome section. Um, that does really need to be uh, sanded down, um, so it's a really smooth finish on that one. Um, the ring that we're going to be doing, uh, I tend to use the medium one on that. You tend not to sand that down too much um, because that needs to be a tight fit in the dome. So I don't want to take away too much of the plastic, although with the paint should build up that, uh, that layer on it. Uh, for those of you who want to know the type of sandpaper I do, so here's the underside of the, uh, of the, uh, the sandpaper. So here is some Bondo glazing and spot putty that I uh, use on quite a few of my models now. Um, the inner ring doesn't need to be sanded down too much. It needs to have a tight fit into the top dome. So I'll be um, slightly spreading this with a finger, obviously putting a glove on first, um, around the ring, um, allowing to dry, which will only take around about half an hour to an hour. So um, let's put this on. So here is the ring with the uh, Bondo putty uh, put on. Use, um, use it sparingly. I tend to put it on with the finger, obviously use gloves. Um, but uh, that's it at the moment. So we just need to sand this, uh, sand this down. Okay, so we've now uh, sanded off the, uh, the Bondo. Uh, filler. Um, I use the very fine sandpaper. Uh, the art of getting a smooth finish is not to push down uh, when sanding away but just very lightly rub. It does take a while to do but just very gradually lightly rub until you get uh, a smooth uh, finish. Um, I made sure any excess that I had that was in here was all um, taken away because obviously that will fit into the, uh, the internal base. Um, and again, with an exo blade, I used uh, just to get any excess that was inside the uh, the holes where the the lights will fit. Um, so I'm quite happy with that now. So the next stage is to um, uh, spray some surface primer on it. Back soon. I've now primed the part. A um, little unhappy with uh, a couple of. Um, parts around the uh, the light area so again I've put some more Bondo uh, glaze and uh, putty uh, in there um, this will now be sanded down I'll probably sand the whole thing down almost down to the white uh, plastic um, and once I've done that I will then give it another coat of primer that should hopefully do that so once I've done that I'll, uh, I'll be back again Right, as you can see here, I've now reprimed the inner ring and I've now given it a coat of Rust-Oleum Silver. A um, couple more processes uh, which I'm about to do, which I will show you now. Okay, so for the next step, I'll be using some Starship Filth Oil. Uh, you'll need some cotton buds um, and I've already prepped some in my palette here. Um, just put a little bit of um, terps with it as well. Now the next stage is to, let's just move these out of the way, is to liberally just paint it all over. It's a bit messy, um, but uh, you'll see the result. Let's just get this over. Uh, it doesn't take long to dry this stuff doesn't doesn't matter whether you've got any finger marks on it because it'll all get polished off um, 
but uh, sorry, I'm going out of the camera there, but so keeping it in the direction uh, as you can see. Now the next thing will be to leave this to uh, dry. It should only take around about half an hour. Um, and then what we'll be doing is we'll be rubbing it off with the, uh, the cotton buds um, and you'll see what sort of effect uh, that will give. As you can see here, once it's uh, dry, you can then just carefully rub with a piece of uh, cotton wool um, around getting the uh, excess off. And as you can see, what's happening is, is it's giving it that brushed steel look. Um, but you do need to go in um, that direction. So we'll finish this off. The next stage is once this is all dry, I should leave uh, is to well, I should leave this to dry for a while, and then the next stage will be to give it a coat of satin varnish. Okay, so I've now finished wiping off all the oil, and I've given it a very light coat of satin varnish. And as you can see, it's given it that more metallic look and sort of a brushed steel. There is one more step to just finish this off, um, which is to use some ammo pigments. Now on this one, I'm using polished metal. And again, all you need with uh, this is uh, a piece of cotton wool. Um, just hold it over, rubbing it on this here, and then rubbing this round, just giving it a bit of a polished look to it all the way around and as you can see really gives it a good metallic polished look so i shall go ahead and uh, finish this off and uh, i'll be back at the final stages just uh, piecing the inner sections together and here it is finished quite pleased with that. I'm not quite sure whether the light's picking it up uh, very well, but you, you can see you've just got that sort of brushed metal look. Uh, certainly looks a lot more metallic than just painting it uh, silver. Um, you just need to go that extra little bit to get a really good finish on this. And as you can see, I've actually put the internal base in there ready for the electronics. The reason this needs to be done first is obviously because we need to get the, uh, the lights glued in here once the electronics are done. So that's the end of uh, this video. Um, please hit uh, subscribe and a like to me if you like this video. Um, the next video will be um, the electronics. See you soon.